Hey everyone, welcome back to Jardev, and welcome back to Celestial Crossing. I was originally just going to leave this as a one-off, but I really enjoyed playing the game. Uh, people seem to enjoy watching it, um, so I thought I'd play more of it. January is always really light on game releases, so I thought uh, doing this for a series should be pretty fun. I, I assume it'll be fairly short. Little fun fact, uh, this time I'm recording with Shadowplay instead of Bandicam, so uh, the mouse cursor will be nice and smooth and not really laggy like it was with Bandicam. <laughs> I don't really remember what happened, I guess, I'm pretty sure we just like went to sleep after um, the, the elf character broke into someone's house. <laughs> I'm disoriented to find myself on the couch in the living room until my memories of the early morning hit me like a ton of bricks. Did I just dream all of that? Yawning, I get up and cautiously knock on my bedroom door a few times just in case. There's a loud startled snort and then silence. <laughs> Definitely not a dream then. I have to go out for a few hours. Please don't go anywhere until I get back, okay? Everything you need is already here and you can work on your armor if you get bored. I sound like a mother scolding a particularly dim-witted child, but I'm too tired to phrase my words more carefully. While I'm at it, I should go ahead and add. There's food in the kitchen if you get hungry. A sleepy murmur is her only response. It's hard to decipher words, but it sounds like piss off. I sigh before grabbing my wallet and heading out the door. Oh, what is that? Mor Morgo Couture? Fashion House? I don't know what Morgo means. Margo? I think it's Margo. That's not an O. <laughs> Lovely cafe. After grabbing a quick bite to eat, I head to the mall to look for some girly clothes. Not sure where to start. I make for one of the bigger department stores that has a little bit of everything and turn toward the female section. I am immediately assaulted on all sides by lace and frills and flowery things. The question of how far I'm willing to take this looms in the back of my mind. Am I getting underwear too? A bra? What sizes? Should I ask someone? My face hot. I try not to look out of place as I sort through some ugly looking blouses. I hear a giggle on my right, and before I can help myself, I look up. It's gonna be his friend, probably. Oh no, it's not. A gaggle of schoolgirls stare right at me and whisper to each other. A horrifying thought occurs to me. What if these are girls from my own high school? Being a social outcast is one thing, being openly mocked and ridiculed is quite another. With a thoroughly unpleasant thought in mind, I drop the shirt I'm holding and run the hell out of there. The humiliation is great as I drag my feet up the stairs of my apartment 30 minutes later. Nerith looks up at me from her seat on the floor when I walk in. Where are the clothes? Her crafting materials lay scattered around her, along with some tools I recognize from the utility closet. All I can do is shrug helplessly and hope she doesn't maul me, the, maul me with the hammer she's using to flatten pieces of metal. She curls her lip in disgust, rolling her eyes. Are you anything other than useless? Forget it then, I'm not staying cooped up in this hovel another day while you dick around trying to find a solution. She's very independent. I'll figure this out myself. The thought of what she might do to get hold of said clothes has me recoiling in horror before I can work myself up to a reasonable argument. Knock, knock, knock. Someone's at the door. Quick, in the closet! Nerd's eyes slit dangerously. What? I clasp my hands in mute appeal. Please, there are little slats so you can see out of. Knock, knock. Be right there! Please, Nerith. Ugh, you're so Despite her words, Nerith picks herself up and shuts herself in the nearby closet. Immediately, I dart to open the door. Hey, oh, now it's his again. friend. How was your day today? Praying she doesn't read too much into my haggard, stressed out appearance, I fumble to answer. Uh, it was fine. I was up late playing video games, so I, I didn't get much sleep, you know. Stop. Stop telling her what a loser you are, idiot. She looks me over with what I hope is concern. You shouldn't do that so often, Hikarukun. You'll get sick if you don't sleep properly. Did you get to eat the dinner I made you, at least? Uh, yes. Yeah, thank you. It was, it was delicious, as always. Mika smiles warmly, and if I were any other guy, I might think her cheeks were a little flushed. She smacks me playfully on the arm. Well, if you're done, can I have my dishes back? That's kind of why I came over. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, hold on just a second. I scramble to my room to assemble the dirty dishes, praying that Nerith won't lose patience and ruin my life by jumping out now. Thankfully, Mika's still standing at the door calmly when I get back, and I hand her the bowls without incident. 
Good. I'll just wash these up before I head over to the store. See you later, Hikaru-kun. Bye. I shut the door behind her one second before Nerith comes barreling out the closet. Without preamble, the elf points a finger imperiously at the doorway. Were those normal clothes? I nod, not sure where she's going with this, but hoping it won't turn into another argument. Does she live nearby? Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. You can't. Do you have a better idea, useless? I opened my mouth angrily, ready to tell her I'd head back to the mall in a heartbeat if the alternative meant inconveniencing Mika-chan. But then I think about the giggles and the stairs. Worse, having to deal with the lingerie department. My shoulders slump and I hear myself answer. She lives down the hall, second door on the left. Nerith nods briskly, suddenly all business. Perfect. I'll sneak in while she's gone and find some shit to wear. Okay, but can you please try to grab only from the back of her closet? Stuff she won't miss right away? Yes, yes, fine. Just go and be a lookout or something. It sounds good to me. The further away I can be if something goes awry, the better. Just one question, though. How are you going to get in? You're not going to break down the door, are you? Nerith gives me a sideways smirk in reply. I have my ways, don't worry. Oh god, I'd worry. Her words don't really instill confidence. If anything, I feel more nervous than ever. Still, I find myself standing obediently outside the apartment complex 20 minutes later when I'm positive Mika-chan is gone. Behind me, I watch in awe as Nerith hops nimbly from balcony to balcony toward Mika's place. She lets herself in by the sliding glass door, and I wait. Wait and worry. Then the worst thing possible occurs. Around the corner comes Mika-chan, grocery bag swinging under one arm as she makes her way home. Shit, how is she back already? Belatedly, I recall I ran into her coming from the store yesterday as well. A quick, trick's a quick trip makes sense if she only went to the convenience store for one or two little things. I know that Nerith isn't done yet, and I have no idea how much longer she'll be. I ain't a stall, but how? Without really thinking about it, I blurt out her name as soon as she's within earshot. Uh, Mika-chan! She looks surprised to see me, but her smile is friendly as always. Oh, Hikaru-kun, what are you doing out here? That's a great question. <laughs> what possible excuse could the reclusive geeky gamer boy have for standing around on street corners in the middle of the afternoon? I thought I'd take a walk to be healthier, like you said earlier. Her eyes dart to fully take in the fact that I'm just standing there despite my words. Her lips curve into a teasing smile. If that's the case, you didn't make it very far, did you? Damn it. Think of something else now. Uh ooh. Should we uh should we make a move on old Mika-chan? The words come tumbling out of my mouth without real thought, and I'd be mortified. If it wasn't for the incredibly cute blush decorating the girl's cheeks. She laughs as if to brush off her embarrassment, but the way she pushed a strand of hair self consciously behind her ear makes my heart stutter inside my chest. How gentlemanly of you. I guess I ruined your shining moment of chivalry by coming home too soon then, huh? Her smile is so soft and feminine, my tongue promptly decides to trip all over itself in reply. It's fine, I, sh I should have made up my uh, mind earlier. She's close enough now that I can just barely catch a whiff of her shampoo. It smells like cherries. Mika giggles a little, readjusting the bag in her hands. I take a moment to glance upward at the balconies. Still no sign of Nerith. I need to get Nika, Mika to turn away from the apartments, I realize. Uh, can I walk you upstairs at least? Her answering grin is enough to make my palms sweat. Sure. I wait for her to turn and pretend to follow. Wait, Mika! She turns away from the building, confused. I... Actually, I, I wanted to know the recipe for the beef stew you made last night. I could tell you that more easily upstairs, Hikaru-kun. She moves to head inside, and I impulsively grab her hand to force her to face me. She looks surprised at the contact, but doesn't pull away. Well, I I thought since I'm already down here, I could head straight to the store to buy the ingredients. No need for unnecessary stair climbing. Mika begins to lift her eyebrow sus suspiciously. I feel the back of my neck break out in a cold sweat until, suddenly, I spot movement out the corner of my eye. Miracle of miracles, Nerith's making her way out the balcony door, her arms laden with clothing. You were just going to remember all the ingredients? Don't
Don't be silly. I would need to write them down for you, along with the cooking steps. I stop listening. The blood drains from my face as I watch a pair of jeans come tumbling out of Nerith's arms toward the sidewalk below as she leaps back toward my apartment. The jig is up. This is all I have time to think as denim fabric hits concrete with a heavy flop. The sound isn't loud, but it's unexpected enough that Mika starts to glance over. If she looks up to see where the pants came from, like any logical person would, she'll be able to catch a glimpse of Nerith right as she opens the balcony door. I have to stop her. My body moves on its own, moving with a speed I wouldn't have thought possible. <laughs> There's a change just sitting behind them. Without any consent from my brain, my hands come up to grab either side of Mika's face in a gentle but firm grip. Her skin is unexpectedly soft. Hikaru? What are you doing? Her voice comes out in a quiet gasp and she drops the suffix in her shock. I say the only thing that crosses my mind at that moment. You have gorgeous eyes. Then my brain kicks into gear and humiliation fills me so completely, I barely notice the sound of her bag hitting the pavement at our feet. I let go of her, as if her skin were hot enough to melt iron. Then I run. Because that's the type of guy I am, unfortunately. Thankfully, I at least had a presence of mind to re retreat up to my apartment, instead of away from it like an idiot. But you are an idiot. <laughs> By the time I close the front door behind me, Nerith's already sitting on the floor investigating her hall. She looks up at me, takes in my red face and heavy breathing, before dismissively turning back to her loot. I close my eyes and try not to think, and try to think. Mika thinks I'm the world's biggest weirdo now. Perfect. Just the cherry on top of the shit sundae that my life has turned into. Then I remember that Mika's hair just smells like cherries and I'm torn between laughing hysterically and crying like a little girl. Instead of succumbing to either of those temptations, I open my eyes. Uh-oh. <laughs> She's gonna kill him. Look at her fucking abs! <laughs> Holy shit. I guess she is like a warrior, though. Only to be greeted by the vision of Nerith stripping to change into one of her new outfits. G stop! The squawk that comes out of my mouth is hardly dignified, but it gets her attention. She looks honestly confused for a minute. Huh? Why? My jaw works soundlessly for a moment. I'm sure I look like some kind of demented goldfish. Because you can't just get naked in front of some guy you hardly know, it's indecent. Despite my strong words, I can't quite tear my eyes away. I'm only human after all. And all that exotically colored skin is on display. Not to mention her, like, 12 pack. Nerith snorts before flashing a wicked grin that doesn't help the situation at all. It's just skin useless. You have some too, don't you? Nothing to get all worked up about. Her words drive me to clap a hand over my eyes. Someone has to protect her modesty, damn it. Can you please just put some clothes on now? With an irritated grumble and a few well-chosen insults, Nerith complies. You know, we could have avoided all this if you had just told me the girl was your lover. What? I drop my hands in shock, but luckily by this point, Nerith's fully clothed. The clothes don't fit well, to put it bluntly. We fail to take into account that Nerith is taller than Mika by at least a head. She, she's not... we're not... and especially not now. The elf finishes zip zipping up her skirt and stares me in the eye with a revolted expression completely at odds with her skimpy getup. My opinion of you could not possibly sink any lower. <laughs> I love that she calls him out on him being a little bitch. Her voice is completely flat, and all I can do is sigh. Incredibly tired all of a sudden. It's been a long day. Isn't it like the afternoon? <laughs> then Nerith resumes her seat on the floor, and it's suddenly very clear that I forgot to explain the importance of undergarments. It takes a while, but I finally managed to convince Nerith to put on some of the panties she took from the back of Mika's closet. Why would she grab them if she didn't know what they were for, though? Why the hell would anyone wear clothing under their clothes? What's the fucking point? You, you just do okay? That way you're not so... exposed. Well, you could do with a little more exposure, in my opinion. With that, she plops herself back down on the floor beside her tools and resumes work on her makeshift armor. I breathe a sigh of relief, hoping this means I'll finally have a quiet moment to myself. You know that this is only going to keep me occupied for another few hours, right? Damn. T. 
teaching an elven warlock how to use the television is a whole new adventure unto itself. And by the time 9 o'clock rolls around, I'm so exhausted I pass out on the couch in the middle of whatever variety show is on. Next morning is Monday, so I drag my feet to the toilet and get ready for school. Between brushing my teeth and digging a semi-clean uniform out of the laundry hamper, I convince myself that Nerith will be fine by herself for the day. I count on the TV being enough of a technological marvel that should captivate her attention for a few hours at least. Uh, she'll probably sleep in anyway. Saying it, out loud, saying it out loud makes it seem like it's a possibility anyway. I knock on the bedroom door to politely let Nerith know I'll be leaving for the day. Her response is a sharp thud against the floor, uh, door, like she threw something heavy at it. I take the hint that, and pray that the thrown object wasn't something breakable like my alarm clock. Poor guy. <laughs> School is relatively uneventful, though a gun of sensei comments that I look awake and alert for once. Too alert, probably. I'm antsy all day and jump at the slightest provocations to the point where people around me start to notice. Oh no, how awkward, a Twitch Live notification. <laughs> Sanso streaming. <laughs> It's hard not to, though, since I can't seem to fight off the anxious feeling that Nerith is going to get into trouble while I'm out of the house. By the end of the day, I'm a nervous wreck, and I beat everyone else to the door as soon as the last bell of the day rings out. Oh my god, <laughs> she lit a fire. <laughs> when I get home, I'm appalled to see that I was absolutely right to worry. The apartment is trashed. Is that blood on the walls? <laughs> and the ceiling? <laughs> and everywhere? Apparently. Mud trails and what appears to be blood spatter decorate almost every flat surface of the home. Some of it is even on the ceiling, suggests that whatever died in here did so explosively. In the middle of it all sits Nerith, calmly roasting some ident unidentical meat over a small fire. <laughs> oh my god. I'm not sure what's worse, but the fact that the, uh, the fire was obviously built using bits of the living room furniture, or the fact that the elf responsible is once again lacking any kinds of pants whatsoever. You... Fire? 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 What? Neighbors? Fire! I'm not sure if I'm just imagining the edge of my vision going grey, but I'm about 95% positive that I'm having a stroke. There'll be absolutely no way of hiding this from my father. When he returns from his business trip, I'm fucking dead. Nerith looks up, utterly unrepentant, and even has the audacity to shrug. Well, what did you expect? I got hungry. I have a whole refrigerator of food! Nerith ignores me, taking a huge bite out of the meat. She takes her time chewing before bothering to form an answer. My patience is running out, useless. I'm used to being outside, running, and more importantly, hitting things. As far as I'm concerned, all of this... She waves her hand around to indicate the disaster that used to be my living room. Is your fault. I slap a hand to my forehead and groan. Clearly, leaving her alone all day is out of the question. I have a sneaking suspicion she went easy on me today, confining her destruction to just the living room. Next time it could be the whole apartment, or, call me forbid, the whole floor. So the only other option... Did those clothes you borrowed yesterday have a school uniform mixed in with them? At her blank look, I cross the room to the pile of neglected clothing and search through it. Mika graduated a couple years ago, so she probably had the uniform in the back of her closet, if she kept it at all. I just pray that Nerith was as thorough as she makes herself out to being grabbed as much as she could. And miracle of miracles, there it is. Guess Nerith's going to school. I feel myself smile for the first time all day. What a relief. And from the looks of it, the pattern shouldn't be all that different from what the other girls in class still wear. What's going on now? I think I'd probably rather leave her at home and just take the trashed house. <laughs> If you don't clean it up, she can't trash it too much more. <laughs> Do you think you could pretend to be a regular human girl for a few days? Nerith's eyebrows raise, rise for a moment before she breaks into a grin that makes me twitch with nervousness. No problem. Uh, it would have to be really convincing, Nerith. You'd have to wear this outfit with underwear, and you'd have to blend in as much as possible. She rolls her eyes heavily. Did you not hear me? It's not going to be a problem, useless. You worry too much. With that, she polishes off last her meal, puts out the fire with a negli negligent wave of her hand, and flounces to the toilet room. I decide not to let the worryingly confident smile on her face get to me. It's much easier just to keep it out of my mind. I prepare a small dinner for myself, and only when the dishes are in the sink and I'm getting ready to go to bed, 
does Nerith finally come out of the other room. Immediately, I can sense a change in the air. Something like static electricity clings to Nerith's body, and it sends little warning tingles towards me when she gets close enough. Is that... What is that? It's my mana. Meditating helps me store it up when I need to work my magic into something... bigger. I'm too afraid to ask what she has in mind. Figuring I'll know soon enough anyway, I turn my attention to the fact that Nerith is still walking around without pants on. Are you really going to be able to fool anyone when you can't even be bothered to wear clothes half the time? Ugh, again with this? Look, those stupid pants and skirts are uncomfortable as fuck. I shouldn't have to wear them when I don't need to blend in. Besides, in case you haven't noticed, all the important bits are covered already thanks to those panties you were so pushy about. Uh, <laughs> if we do this, she's going to think uh, we are even more of a bitch than she already thinks, so we have to stand up to her and then maybe she'll respect us. Even as my face turns red, I feel my temper grow in an unfamiliar way. Does she have to be to so troublesome? I've had a hell of a time these last few days, and I'm sick of debating her over the same stupid thing over and over. Look, you're just gonna have to get used to it. If you don't figure this out, I can't take you to school with me, or anywhere else. Shit, did I say that out loud? I gulp nervously, risking a look up at Nerith. She looks shocked at my words, then her eyes narrow and I feel the bottom fall out of my stomach. There's no point in running or vomiting, which are my two most immediate impulses. So instead, my eyes squeeze closed, and I wait for her to cut me in half with her magic. Okay, she's gonna think he's a bitch either way. Oh god! A Reddit notification! <laughs> this is very unprofessional. Well, you've happened to catch me in a good mood, useless. Thinking I must be suffering from some kind of auditory hallucination, I keep my eyes shut tight until I hear the unmistakable sound of a zipper. Surprised, I cautiously take a peek at her. She stands there wearing a skirt and an amused grin. Wow, she changes fast. She is, a, she is a warrior though, so... I guess? I'm not sure what my expression looks like, but she chuckles, swatting my arm. I'm not a complete bitch, you idiot. I get that this is your world, and you have a better idea of how to make this work than I do. I think I can humor you in this one thing. With another smirk, she heads for the bedroom, leaving me standing there gaping after her. I'm still in shock when I go to sleep that night. If he breaks my water station, I'm going to be so sad. Can I, like, hit him with this hammer? Fuck. No! My water purifier! <laughs>